Okay, so uh, welcome. And in this final, I'd like to be the final model building exercise uh, in this bootcamp incubator, we're going to be building up a model that's designed to capture nested context. The ability to capture context and its varied form, spatial context. Geographic context, context in terms of one or more networks, as well as some others, is, is one of the premier advantages for, for Asian based modeling. And, you know, in today's, uh, today's health sciences, um, there's a growing awareness that of the profound role that context shapes um, people's uh, health trajectories when it comes to social determinants of health, when it comes to issues having to do with um, uh, factors of uh, social support, social interaction, um, the impacts of the food environment, the impacts of the, the stressors such as, as crime and, and other matters. Um, all these uh, are, are well recognized to have profound impacts. And increasingly these days, we're in other aspects too, such as uh, online environment. And age based modeling provides us this really rich and powerful tool for capturing those aspects of context. Uh, some leading figures in the States in social epidemiology, people like Sandro Galea and George Kaplan and others, um, have, have turned to age based modeling precisely because it does capture um, such effects so critically for the lens of social epidemiology. And today we're gonna to be seeing in concrete terms, how we can capture aspects of, of, of this context in a model. But we're also gonna see how agent-based modeling allows us to do it in a way that's very natural, that where in some sense, the, the structure of the model mirrors, mimics corresponding structures in the world. So just as we in the socio-ecological model in health, have nested context of, you know, individual, family, neighborhood, you know, uh, city or, or municipality, regional, et cetera, context that we might think about. So it is in the model. It's, it's a very natural sort of um, nesting or, or series of, of successively larger context. And this has profound significance as well for comparing models against empirical data, because sometimes we have data through multi-level modeling efforts or through data collection at different points, uh, different levels of jurisdiction. We have data at different scales. So we might have data from LA Department of Public Health about particular neighborhoods, and then also for the city as a whole, or from California Department of Public Health for, for the, all of California and then the CDC for all of the US. And you know, similar points could be made at a local, regional, provincial, and, um, and uh, countrywide level, of course, for Canada. Um, and you know, to the degree we want our model results to be able to be tested against, be, be used to help explain, calibrate against, um, data from the world, we often want model structures that mimic in terms of context those from the world. For all these reasons, you know, we often are driven to, to capture this context. And, and any logic captures this nested context better than any other platform that I know. Um, and I'd like to give you some understandings of, of why I say that. So um, I'm going to Play our models. I'm going to say file flows all. So we start with uh, tabular RASA. And we're going to go through an exercise that will build on skills we've been, we've been tapping all week, um, but will hopefully deepen, um, deepen those skills and take them further while exposing you to hierarchical models. Okay. So um, what I'd like you to do is to create a new model. Uh, so File new model. And this model will be called um, oh thank you, thank you. 
Thank you. Thank, thank you. Very good. That's good. Really helpful. Um, okay. So this will be called uh, uh, hierarchical. Oops. Hierarchical. SEIR v1. Okay. Um, the v being version. And I'm going to make the time unit year. Okay. Year. Okay. I'm going to say finish. There we go. Um, so now we're going to have the skeletal project there created. Now um, I'm going to add two levels of context. This could, I think you can readily see how it will be extended to more than two. And I think we have example models where we have more than two. But this lecture is between you and lunch, and I'm not going to go into you know, um, additional levels for, for keeping it a little bit briefer. But I think you'll see how all the patterns carry over. Okay. So um, what I'm going to do here is to to go and add in first new agent type. And this is going to be called um, city. Um, okay. Um, and um, we could call it municipality if you prefer. Um, it's not necessarily denoting truly urban areas. It could be a smaller, smaller municipality as well, but I'm going to call it city. And next, I'm going to add in um, a, uh, uh, well, okay, probably, probably just for best practice, we should probably elaborate the appearance of cities first, because that is important. And one of the earliest mistakes people can make in any logic is failing to give an initial representation of an agent. And then coming back later and doing it and finding they have to fix something up in the model to kind of retell any logic they've, they've added this later. It's kind of a pain. So for city, I'm going to go and put in a presentation here, and I'm going to add a rectangle. Okay. Um, and it's going to be a rectangle that's going to be centered on the origin here. By the way, by centering on the origin, what that guarantees is that the logical XY location of a person will be where this is, is centered. If I put this way over here, don't do it, but if I put it over here, their X location will be offset visually from their logical. So the fact that I've situated it on this cross crosshairs, as it were, means that I'm, I'm capturing it centered um, on, on their logical location. I'm going to make its width uh, 100, and I'm going to make its height 100 as well. Okay, And I'm going to recenter it. Too. No, 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 I can't. Okay. Um, okay, so that's city. Okay, that's city. What did I do? I went down to palette. I dragged in a rectangle. I set its width and height to be 100, and I, I centered it on, on this. You notice that I was kind of initially fussing with it visually, and then I just set the properties. And in general, it's, it's worth remembering. You can often go in and just set the properties and not worry about you know, trying to wrangle it visually. Are you OK with that? OK. Um, so we have city. And uh, and then I'd like you to go add a person agent class. It's tempting to go run it. We'd have to add a population, but first let's let's add another agent type. So I right click on this, say file new agent type, or you can do it in the way of your choosing. And I'm, and this is going to be say say with no surprises person, okay, with a capital P. And for person, we're going to also give them a representation. And for that, we'll give a anthropomorphic representation in palette. So we're going to go to the palette, down to the pictures area, and we're going to drag in person. 
uh, representation, that little, that little image. One of my goals here is to show you how you can color that image in a way that connotes their health status, because we haven't done that with that image yet. We've done it with circles, but this will do it with an anthropomorphic image. We'll show how to color it, which is a little bit more subtle than with, a, with an oval. Okay, so we've added that, and I'm going to set it scale in position and size. I'm gonna set it to a scale of 0.5, okay? So, so scale is set in the position and size area of this little image. I'm gonna set it to scale X and scale Y, and for good measure, scale Z, boom, okay? So all that means it's gonna be smaller than what it appears right now. It's gonna be half, half that size, both in kind of X and Y, okay? That's what we did. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I, sure. Um, yeah. No. But for setting the scale, this is what I did here. Okay. Okay. So if we run this model, what will we see right now? Would we see anything of interest? Answer is no. Why not? What don't we have here? Population. We don't have any populations of these people. We have a theory of personhood and a theory of cityhood, but no population. So no population of either. So let's go add population. How do we add population? Anyone remember? Yeah, drag the agent over. Good. Good. Okay. So I'm going to drag city in. I created that first. I'll drag it in and I'll call it cities. And what do I have to do to turn into a population? Population. And um, really, I want to make this have a parameterized size. So if I want to have the city so that every scenario, Every experiment, I could set it to a different number of cities. How would I do that? Add a parameter to where? Maine, indeed. Maine, indeed. Because Maine has this population of cities there, and it's Maine that needs to know how many cities are. It's really a, it's not, it's not a characteristic of each person. If it were a characteristic of each person, we'd put that parameter in person or in city. Um, or characteristic of the city population, the, the population size of that particular city to do it. But I'm talking very how many cities. So maybe we'll have a count cities parameter. What sort of type is this? Is it a, a, a double string? Yeah, it's an integer, it's a count. That's exactly right. And I'm gonna make its default value five. If, if, if an experiment doesn't change it, the baseline value will be five, okay? Are we okay with that? And now suppose I want there to be not cities, many cities. How would I do that? What do I need to do to complete this up? If I, if I want there to be as many cities as is given by the count, count cities, where would I go specify that? The cities is the population. Where do I specify the number of agents in that population? Uh, well, okay, so the population here, you'll notice it actually says the initial number of agents. Okay? And so what would I fill in there? Count cities. And if I were really trying to convey the point, I'd say this dot dot count city. There it is. Are you okay with that? Uh, yes, Michael. We're right. We're referring to I'm right now dealing with Maine. And so this is going to refer to Maine. It's it's referring, it's a reference to the 
the, the single unique object of the class name, speak in language you understood. So this is referring to the current sort of object um, in which this code is run. Yeah, yeah. Um, because you were at the, the Java tutorial, I think that, okay. that's how it explains. It's referring, so this code is running somewhere and this is referring to the object in which it's run, which is the only name I could. Okay, so can we run it now? What will we see if we run it now? We'll see five cities. And in fact, let's do that. So I would say build it, make sure it's your friend. Well, it says make sure it's a happy friend. Build completed successfully. And then I'm gonna say run. Here we go. You ready? Run. And here we say we have count cities. And this thing says there are five cities. If we click on this, we could say, and if we go and look and we drill down, we'll see, oh, there are five cities, city zero, city one, city two, city three, city four. Um, uh, okay, um, great. Now, why, why don't we see them spread out? Why, why, why is it just like one rectangle when we ran it? Why does it look like one rectangle? Ah, uh, good. Yeah, we haven't indicated something about their location, right? That's exactly right. Okay. Um, so, so let's go. And where would we set it? So there's two places I told you you can actually set sort of locations and so on. One, which I'm not going to be tapping here, is the initial location. We could say make it in the specified point and draw that from the distribution or make it based on their income or something like that. The other way is actually in main, if I scroll down to space and networks, I could actually tell it, hey, I wanna set this to be um, uh, right. Um, uh, I'm going to set it to be randomly distributed. I'm going to have a, a network among cities. It's a distance based network, okay? Um, with connection range, um, excuse me, uh, right, connection range 300, okay? Distance based network. Okay, so where am I? Just want to be very clear. I'm in Maine. I scroll down to space and networks. I told it to use a network type random, I told it to use, sorry, a layout type random, a network type distance base and a connection range of 300. Are we okay with that? Okay. Now, there's one other thing I wanna do to make sure any network is visible. What do I need to do to make a network visible? Does anyone remember? We did that on like Wednesday. To actually make, what's that? We draw the lines and where do we draw the lines here? Connections, you got it. And if you go click in connections, this is a, a connections. Oh, I'm sorry. We actually do it in city connections because Maine has connections, but those are the connections in Maine, which doesn't make sense, Maine to Maine. So we actually have to do it in city. Mm -hmm. Cities connections, those will be to other cities. And if we do that in city, we say connections, we'll click draw line connection with, okay? So you have to go into city, click on connections and do draw line connection with. Are we ready? Are we ready? Okay, so let's go run this thing. What should we see? Anyone? What should we see? Run. What, what do you think we'll see? Anyone want to prognosticate? Look at that. See that? Or if I run it again, it looks the same. If I run it again, it looks the same. What is that telling me about, there's another parameter which, or another setting, which I've mentioned, but I really want to drive it home for those stalwart individuals staying for this session. What is it telling me every time I get the exact same result in an Ubiverse model? It's 
fixed seed. You actually want to change it to random seed. Okay, that's in the experiment. The experiment, ladies and gentlemen. The experiment. You want to change it to fix seed. I'm going to run it, and I'm going to see this time. There can be variability because each time it'll be different. There we go, and we'll run it another time. It'll be different, and another time it will be different. You see that? Okay. Okay. Great. Good. Okay. Next. So we have cities and population of cities, et cetera. Um, but now we're going to have to deal with people. Now, do you think we just go create a population of people in Maine? No, people are going to live where? In the city. The people will be living in the city. Cities is the highest level collection. And then within each city will be a population of people. This is different from what we've done before. Our, our roads have diverged from that earlier path. Now we're dealing with nested contexts. Okay, so let's go into city. Okay, and we're going to go start building up structure there okay um so what i'd like to do is to go first of all put in a parameter guess what this parameter is going to encode in the city it's going to encode what population size of that city right so it's going to be population size and what sort of, given that this is a count, what sort of type is it going to be? Integer indeed. And we'll give it an illegal value. No one provides it. Hey, there's a problem. Minus one. Okay, fine. Okay. Okay. This is good. This is good. Um, okay. So. What I'm going to do here is to now add a population of that size. What am I going to add it to? A population of that size of people. Where is it going to go in the model? Into city. Now, so how are we going to add a population of people into the city? Anyone? Yeah, drag person into the city. There we go. Drag person. And what do we have to do to turn that into a population? Okay. Good. I'm going to say population. You change it. This is the most operative thing. You change it to a population version. And notice it puts that square bracket thing that indicates that it's a population, right? Otherwise, it's just one embedded agent. But here, it's, we want a population. And how many people in that population? Riddle me that. Yeah, the population size of this dot population size. I mean, sometimes, like, we don't have to say this, but it, it bears emphasis. We're not talking about a population size for, you know, for Maine or something. It's, it's this one, right? Not that there is something called population size, but it's worth emphasizing. It's the population size of this city. Right? It's optional, but it sometimes it, it helps reflect it. Okay. The population. Are we okay with us? Okay, so there's gonna be this many people in the city. Now, by the way, these people are gonna move around eventually between each city. Okay. We're, we'll show that, but but for now it's a set of people who live in that city. Hey, let's try building this model and let's try running. Are you ready? So I built it okay. Who needs TA help? The TAs, stalwart after days, they're veterans of 
of great repute. Um, okay, so I see this. That's great. There's six. There's five cities. I see they're interconnected with like a road or rail network or what have you. Where can I go and look at what's going on within each city? Yeah, bottom right. And where do I go here? Oh, I go to this little widget, right? And I'm going to pull down cities. And guess what I see in cities? Population size of minus one. Why is that? That's the default. So we're going to need to set the population. Where do we set the population size? So this parameter of city, where is the assumption about that set? So where, where, where is it drawn? Anyone? Like, what is it that's, that should be telling them how big the city is? It's in Maine, and where in Maine? Yeah, the cities, it's just like before, remember we had population of people and, and the population and, and the assumptions about that population were, were dictated by, by there. So now cities is gonna distribute. So, so this is, it's going to run this expression, this formula again and again, for each person to be created, it's gonna be running. Remember that? So what we're going to do is draw from a value. We're gonna draw from a uniform discrete distribution, uniform disk, and you can auto-complete it if you want. This is basically gonna draw between two integer values because population is an integer. Are you ready for this? Well, ready or not, here we come. Um, okay, so 100 to 300. So we're gonna have our cities go from 100 to 300. Do I need a semicolon there? No, and why not? It's an expression. It's calculating a value. It's job in life is to calculate a value. We're not telling it like, do this, like have a person move over there or disappear, you know, be created at a birth or, or remove them for the body. No, no, no. We're just, we're just calculating a value. We're just drawing it from this formula, which is called an expression. And speak Java ease with considerable fluency. Um, uh, okay, great. So, and actually, it goes beyond that. Pretty much for any program, that term. Computer scientists could be truly impressed. Okay, so I said uniform discrete. So, this is going to draw the population size of each city from this. For each city in turn, each of those five right now, um, it's going to draw from the distribution. Right? And if we want to learn more about that distribution, we could do so with this Java wizard that we talked about earlier, but there's a uniform discrete um, uh, described uh, in here. Uh, in here. Okay. okay, so if we run it now, what should we, what should we see? Running it is your friend, running it is, okay. Okay, now we're seeing, what do we see differently? That's right. Um, and if we went to this panel, just like we did before, and we go down into cities, now we will see this city has a population of what size? Anyone? 244. City one has a population of 199. City two has a population of 281. And by the way, we could drill down into that city and see individual population numbers, but they are singularly um, indistinguishable right now. We will soon change that, okay? So now actually we, we have an, a hierarchical population, pretty cool, um, but we've got to do some work to sort of prettify it and, and make it make it nice. Um, okay, um, great. So uh, what I'm going to do is, is go and deal with people in, in a city. Um, so the first thing we could try here is within a city, um, I'm showing you some repertoire. Um, uh, we could go to a city 
and we could go to space and network. If we wanted to distribute these people in the city randomly in space, we could, you know, it, it's a reasonable idea. Go to space and network and set the layout type to be random, right? Set it to be random layout within that city, right? Okay, so let's see what happens if we do that. Give that a try. Good into We've always done that in Maine before because all our populations lived in Maine, but now we've done it in the city. Okay. And oh no. What happened? <laughs> They're random. It just doesn't know the appropriate bounds. It doesn't know, oh, the city only has this rectangle which forms its bound. It thinks it's much bigger than it is. And it it kind of skews them out over the landscape. Um, okay, so we need to somehow tell it about the bounds of the city. And there's actually a couple different ways that this could be done, okay? Um, and uh, I'll, I'd like to sort of dialogue with you about this. Okay, so in city, um, we have random and and notice it says the width is 500 and the height is 500. Do you see that? Okay. Um, so we could try to say, actually, the width is not 500. The width is actually the width of the what? Of this rectangle. Do you see that? So I could say, let's go see what this is named, rectangle. It seems like a reasonable name. Um, I'm going to say rectangle dot mm, um, get width. Okay. And I'm going to say, okay, so that's, that's the width of this space. And then I'll say rectangle dot get height. We could give that a try. Okay. So now instead of saying that this the width of this space is just the default 500. I'm being particular. It's only as wide as this little rectangle. So if we enlarge the rectangle, it'd be wide, right? We could always go peek at what this is and say it's 100 and put 100 there. But then if we drag the rectangle to be larger, we'd have to remember to go fix it up. And we wouldn't know if that 100 is the same as that one. As Louisa wisely intoned, we don't know if it's the same 100. And it's just easier to have it depend on it. That's the theory, okay? Um, that's what I teach my students. Okay, so the width is the same as given by the rectangle and the height is as given by the rectangle. Are you ready for that? Let's try building it and see if it's a happy camper and let's try running it and see if it's a really happy camper, okay? Um, and well, it's, it's nice, but something's kind of off. Do you, do you kind of get a sense what's going on? Yeah. Can I get a sense? Does, does it look like this is a little bit offset from this? It's like it's at the right size and everything, but it's offset. And the truth is, really, this should start up here. This should be the starting point of the city. Normally, we 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 center things over it because we want the center of the person to be over the city. In this case, we want the city, the X and Y relative to the city to be from this upper left, okay? Rather than the center. We don't want to be dealing with negative distances to left and positive, you know, going up. We just want to send it here. This will be zero, zero for the city. This will be a hundred, a hundred, and so on, okay? So that's what we want to do. So. When I said earlier that thing about being offset from its position, it's, it's worth reflecting. And there we go. We're a happy camper. And so is the computer. It's a happy silicon camper. Okay? Are we okay with that? Okay, so now we have people in cities. They're scattered around. And if you wanted to, you could make those cities larger. And it would auto-magically adjust. So maybe I'll make it um, maybe I'll make it 200 by 200 like that. Is 
said, okay. And I could run it like that. And the only thing is sometimes they'll overlap, but that's what you see in megalog bases. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so there we go. Yeah. Um, so you can pick how big you want it. Maybe I'll make it back to a smaller size just so we can see it a little bit clearer. Um, this thing. Okay, great. Um, so we're cooking with gas. Now what I'd like to do is to set it so that we have people have a network within each city. Where would I set that? Anyone? Where do we set a network within each city? Say, I want a city to use a, a distance-based network or a scale-free network. Well, it turns out it's within a city. And the city takes care of its space and network that applies within it. So we said things should be random within the city in the properties of city, space and network of city. And we want to say the network type is a distance-based network within that city with a connection range of 15. Are we okay with that? Okay. We okay with that? So I'm in city and the properties of city and space network set the rules for the agents within them, in the populations within them, like this population of people. We set it to be randomly laid out. And then we set it to be a distance-based network with a connection range of 15. Do you see that? Okay, let's, let's go on it. Here we go. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. And okay. So do you see anything different? No. What have we not done yet? Building the skills here. What have we done, not done yet? When we want to connect people and we want it to be visible, what do we have to do? Draw the line. Where do we draw the line? Where do we go to set what characteristics we want the line like will be visible? In person as well. Yeah, in person. It's connections in person, not connections in city. Connections in city will be about cities connecting to cities. Connections in person. These things are worth emphasizing, particularly in this hierarchical context, because it's easy. Like in building a normal model, it's hard to get confused about that. Here, it's easy to get confused. So it's in person. Are we okay? So I said draw the line. Okay? Okay. Notice we could set the characteristics. Of Come back to that in just a moment. So I'm going to run this. And there we go. Do you see that? Networks within each city. Right? And I could go zoom in and I'd see that network in more detail. So now we have people arranged in cities into networks. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're doing pretty well. We're doing pretty well. Great. Um, but let's make the cities connected with something that looks bigger, thicker, to indicate it's a, you no, know, it's a bigger transport now. So how would I make the connections between cities look um, uh, to have sort of thicker line? Where would I go? Anyone? Connections here in the line width. You got it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it thick. Thick. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Um, maybe we could even make it, make it a different color. Let's make it blue. Okay. There we go. Okay. There we go. So now we have this connection between cities, and we have people within cities, and the people are arranged networks that are specific to the city and the cities are nested in a network of their own amongst those cities. And if you were to run it again and again, you could, you could find them connected. And by the way, it's very easy to go set these cities to be at certain locations. 
We could do this geographically, in fact, with the GIS by combining what I've just done here with that GIS interface we looked at before searching for tobacco shops or whatever. We could, we could do this in, in, um, in that sort of space as well. Although we, we probably put them in the bounds of their city, the, the, the sort of region representing their city as we did with homes in Tampa Bay. Okay, are we ready? Okay, we're doing pretty well here. We're doing pretty well. Um, coming along well. Okay. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add something that's a little bit unusual. It's again kind of outside our experience, but it teaches a good lesson. I'm going to have people move between cities. Move now, mind you, this is. A little bit different than just moving them in space. Remember, we have that model where they moved in space. Um, uh, this is different. Here we're having having them move between populations. It's going to take them out of one population and put them in another population. And even as we speak, ladies and gentlemen, this is being this process is being applied in the incubator. It's not. 200 meters net. Um, it probably not 100 meters uh, over or yonder. Um, in the horses, they're going between a population at home, the stable at home, and the stable uh, located at the uh, show event, the horse show, um, and moving between populations. So if they can only be in one population at a time, and we move them between, we're gonna we're gonna see how we accomplish this in any way. Are you ready? Okay, so we're going to add in a, uh, a, an assumption about how frequently people move between cities. Now, at a certain level, you could be excused if I were to ask you where should this population, this parameter live? You could be excused for, for giving several possible answers. You could say, I think it should live in person because it's a characteristic of a person. And it is a characteristic of a person, but it doesn't vary between person. You could say, I, I think it lives in city because it holds for all persons across the city. And that is true, but it holds for all persons across all cities. Moreover, we want it to be modified by the scenario, by the different experiments. And the natural place for that parameter to live, for better or for worse, and I've mixed feelings about it, but in any logic, the answer is clear about where you put it. You put it in Maine because it's kind of a global parameter. It, it, it relates to individual be human behavior, which is several levels down, but it is uniform across all those populations. So I'm going to put it in Maine. And I do so with a measure of a pulse. But, um, uh, I think it's in the scheme of hideousness in the world, this is not ranked highly. So this is going to be called migration rate. This is going to be a migration hazard, a chance per unit time that people will migrate. And as a parameter in Maine, we want to give it a value that it will hold for the baseline scenario. And I'm going to make it here, ladies and gentlemen, zero, sorry, 1.0 divided by 10.0. I could also, meaning on average, they will move every 10 years. Oh, I'm in, I'm in city. Oh my gosh, I'm in city. Okay, rookie mistake. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Rookie mistake. All the more dangerous with this model because we have so many involved so many different levels. Where should this live? I just gave a, a long, if not impassioned argument for that it should live in person, in, in Maine rather. So I'm gonna put it up in Maine, thank you. But always keep an eye out into what are you adding something. One of the biggest, most common mistakes is you add it into the wrong place, particularly for, for those newer to anyone. I, I made it 1.0 divided by 10, 0, 2. 10.0 to communicate the fact that if, if we have a rate of one over alpha, it's, it's because they move every out or one over tau, it's because they move every tau 
time units on average. So this, this will be saying by the baseline interpretation, they move every 10 years on okay? a given person. Okay. okay. Um, we're really cooking with gas here. Or we're really getting to the heart of a lot of a lot of the issues that that kind of um, define this model. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'd like to now actualize their migration. They're going to be migrating between cities, and who is they that's going to be engaged in said migration? It's what person person. So we have to go down to the person level again. And we're going to set an event, which will be a migration event. Okay. Um, but we kind of saw this before with respect to births and birth events. We could do this with an event, but it's often more visually clear and actually less ambiguous in the timing of it if we do it with a state chart. So I'm going to put in a state chart and this will be called migration state chart. It, it turns out it's to be one of several. Then I have a disease state chart. Health state chart. This is gonna be migration state chart. And it's going to have a state which is going to be, um, you know, um, um, uh, so this is going to be, you know, in city, um, and I, I should have a better name than that, but, uh, at rest, maybe I'll call it at rest, something like that, um, or, or station, stationary, maybe I'll call it stationary, um, uh, I, I'm not, not sure the best name for it, but that's probably not horrible. And then I'm going to have an event which is going to change their location. And that event will be a migration event. How would I have an event that goes off periodically in a state chart like this? If I want an event, when I say periodically, I actually mean semi-periodically, at that rate, at that hazard rate that um, I just specified, the migration hazard. How would I have something that goes off at that rate? Anyone? Ah, yeah, we're going to have a transition. And when, where's, whence is that transition going to come and whither will it go? In other words, where does it come from and where does it go to? Yeah, yeah. And, and to actually just go back to stationary. So, so they leave the stationary state and they do a little bit of a sojourn and then they come back into a stationary state. You see that? Just like this. Just like on the, and so this is going to be called migration. That's the name of this transition. Are we ready with this? Show name, migration. They're migrating from one city to another. I know it, I'd actually rather do it with an event here in some ways, but um, this does make clear visually that there's migration going on. It, there's nothing deep about the state here. It's like there's one state, but it, they come back to that state after a sojourn out of it. And so in, in a certain way, I, I think it's fitting it's that, that we have this transition depicted um, um, as it is here. Okay, and, and how often will this be occurring? Anyone? Yeah, but where does that migration weight live? In Maine, and you'll notice, and this is again another important part about how any logic supports these nested contexts. Do you remember when we had persons within Maine? What did we always have access to in order to like go up and grab something in Maine, like increment a count of times someone's got, you know, heart disease has been um, incident case of heart disease have occurred for a given week? What could we do? We could refer to call something called what? It was called Maine. Do you remember that? If the person was in a population in Maine, there was something called Maine that was provided to them. There were other ways to get it too, but it was called Maine. Well, it turns out here, um, there's something up there provided called city that shows the city 
with which the, in which this person is embedded. But there's another thing, main 12. Do you see that? So any logic actually takes care of telling us, like, what city are we on for a given person? Because they're in a nested context. And for the next level up, it says, mate, if this person were in a family and they were then in a neighborhood and they were then in a city and then in a region and then in a province, state, you know, all those levels would be there. So you could go up and say, what's my state? What's my province? What's my, you know, city? Um, even many levels up. And, and that's what you see here. So, Maine. so, so if we were wanted to get from Maine the migration rate, how could we do it? And what sort of what sort of transition is it? The rate transition. So it has rates, a chance per unit time. And and where do I get that value? You got it. Main dot migration rate. It will even fill it out for you. You got the hang of it. You got the hang of it big time. This is great. Um, okay, so it's migration rate and it occurs per year, right? Because our time uniform model is year. And this is by default. By the way, if it was a monthly migration rate, we could always choose that. Um, but by default, it's per the unit of time of the month. We okay? Okay, um, so this is great. So migration is gonna occur now. What's the missing thing? What, what's the missing little bit? What do we have to do when they migrate? Mm -mm. It says migration rate. It's gonna fire every so often. Mm -mm. You're gonna migrate. It says migration. They're gonna undergo migration. Mm -mm. But what, are, what aren't we doing yet? We're not in fact, what? Yeah, we're not moving the people. We're not realizing yet. We gotta put in a bit of code. It won't be bad. It won't be bad. Okay. 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 Great. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um. Okay. So, I thought I was cutting out some code by eliding something earlier. Now I see why it's just I did it. Okay. Okay, so here we go. We are going to, we're going to call a function. We're going to create a function called perform migration. Perform migration. Okay, and this function, this, uh, it's over from here, function. See that in palette? There we go, perform migration. This function's job in life is going to migrate this person. Okay, and so when I undergo migration, guess what I'm going to call? Perform migration. Call it. It doesn't need anything to do its job. It'll perform the migration. Mm -mm. That's good. And now we're going to be able to set the internals of perform migration. Functions are your friend with a capital F, I would. Um, so uh, they allow the same code to be reused for many places. Maybe there's several places in the model where migration is occurring. They allow different people to work on what's going on in that function from the rest of the model. They make it so when I look at the logic of the model, I don't have to look at all of these cookie details. I don't know if cookie is the word, but um, I'll use it for Saturday. And um, good key details. And in general, it, it gives it a clear name. So it's clear what's going to go on here when I'm using it. It's intention revealing. So now we just have to fill, fill out the details. I remember when I was uh, still a younger man, um, uh, a friend of mine told me how she had, in high school, um, had a book or, or high school or junior high about programming. And it said, when you build up a program, divide things up into functions and pretend when you're doing that, like when we wrote perform migration, that there's a really smart friend who's going to fill in that function. So don't worry about the details yet. Just like call off to it, knowing that when the time comes, it will be filled in. And that's how you divide up, you divide and conquer. That's how you, that's how you make progress. You, you break it into little and littler pieces 
And then you go back and fill in the pieces. And ideally, that's that really smart friend who will do it for you. But if they don't do it, you do it yourself. And it's really small pieces, by the way. It's really small things. That you so perform migration. Now it's our time to shine. Okay, we're we're going to make it shine, like the city of Saskatoon. Okay, um, so here we go. Perform migration. This is what's going to happen. Are you ready? This is the heart of. This is like the most unique logic of this whole model. It's going to be right here. Okay, first of all, we have to, you know, if you're going to head out on a journey, one of the first things you're advised to do is figure out where you want to go. Hmm? So I'm going to say city. I'm going to go, well, I, I don't know where I'm going to go yet, but I know I'm going to go to a city. You agree? I'm going to a city. Okay. City. Destination city. I'm going to call it destination city. By the way, this for those who are in the Java tutorial, this is called a variable declaration. Right? And you're saying, I have this thing. It's going to be a, a, a nice little short name for my destination city. I'm going to give it a name here. And it's going to disappear. And I'm going to ask, hey, get me a destination city. Now, where am I going to pull that destination city? What are the possible destination cities? Can anyone say? Uh, what, but it's one of the five that are connected to my city. Because remember, we have this network of connections. So I want to find out for my city, what are its connections? Give me a random connection from it. So I'm going to say my city. How do I say my city? Yeah, this dot, what? City. That's, remember, remember, I could refer to main or I could refer to city, right? This dot city. My city. Right? My city dot connections, I want to get that city's connections, because it too has connections. Remember, we made them blue, like Michigan, right? Go blue. Okay. Um, dot connections dot get random connected agent. There we go. We picked out a random city among the connections of my city. Right, let's go parse that out my city, I've got my city, I ask for its connection. Mm. And then I get a random connected agent. I actually don't know if I need this connection, but I think I could probably do get random connected agent just like that. What do you think, Wade? I think that would. Yeah, it, it might have to. Uh, I think that will work. It might have to be cast. That's the only thing. Um, yes, because it it's an agent. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, this is actually the the code. But there's one more thing I need to do to make it really clear. And and this isn't a bad thing to learn. I'm gonna make this smaller. Here we are. The thing of beauty. But there's one thing that's a fly in the ointment that's an annoying fly, and I'll, I'll, I'll go fix the fly. It's a good lesson to have. It says, look, I got a random connected agent, but I, it, all I know, it's an agent. This would be a city. Now, one thing I could do for those in the Java tutorials, I could cast this to a city. Say, look, just tell me it's a dumb city. Give it to me as a city, okay? Um, I know what I'm doing. You could do that, but actually, there's a more elegant way. The reason is it doesn't know what cities are connected with, what other things they're connected with. Maybe they're connected with service dogs. Maybe they're connected with people. It doesn't know. So what we can add is this. That's this. Mark my word. We'll go to city. And you see it says connections there? Hmm? See it says connections? You notice that you can tell it here what are the elements in the city? I'm going to tell it's a city. Cities are connected, ladies and gentlemen, to cities, not just to persons or cows or homes or service dogs. They're connected to cities. Connection in city contains a network of cities. It's a connection among cities. 
Are we okay with that? And by the way, that's good practice in general. If you know what's in your network, name it there, and it will spare you grief uh, in some cases. So it's probably a good thing to do as a general hygienic lesson. Go, go declare that this is, for example, a person network. Persons are connected to persons. So it doesn't have to worry. Maybe a person is connected in their network to a city. No, 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 it doesn't have to worry about that. So in general, when you have networks at a certain level, you, it's good to kind of say, what can they can be connected to, okay? I know it's, it's a little bit of annoying, but it'll spare you, spare you grief. No, it's still, no, 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 still, still giving that error, which is annoying. Um, okay, I, I would have thought it would, it would now know what type of, uh, wait, yeah. Yes, then it knows then it knows because it will look up in the connections. So actually it was in there for a good reason, right? Yeah. Now, if I hadn't said they can only be connected to cities, it wouldn't know, right? Yeah. It would also get the same problem. Yeah, so I thought it would have been. Okay, so connections is useful there. But if you just say random connection without connections, it doesn't, it's not. Which is ugly. Yes, yes, indeed. Um, but when it, if you called get random connected agent from, and you had multiple sets of connections, it could draw them from any of those. Yeah, yeah. That's. I, I thought it was always from the default collection, the default connection, but I'm not sure about that either. Okay, okay. So we got ourselves. A potential city. We don't have much. We have two. We have three lines of code left, and one of them is just to be careful. What could go wrong? Let's suppose our city is an island. It has no neighbors. We might not have a, a destination city. We might have to say in our island city. So, the next bit of code. I have two lines left substantive. This this first line is just gonna that's gonna lay the groundwork for the other two. It's gonna check if the destination exists. If destination city, there we go, destination city is not equal to null, meaning if we have a destination city. Now I actually dislike that. I I don't like saying if it's not equal to, but sometimes it's the right thing you want to. I generally prefer saying, is it equal to? Because people are really bad at reason about not equal to. But, but in this case, I think it's pretty clear. It's like, if I have a destination city, okay? Um, and I'll actually put in, you know, if, um, if I have a city to which I can transit, um, then move to that city. These are comments I'm putting in here, okay? So how am I gonna go to that city? The key thing, and this is, this is like the essence of the most distinguishing thing of this model, the next line I'm about to write, okay? Ready? This, that's me, I'm a person, right? Are you ready? This dot go to population. And which population do I go to? To to which population do I go? You tell me. Where do I go? Yeah, to the destination to the destination city, right? But where should I go? The destination. I was afraid someone would say, I'll tell you. Um, so destination city <laughs> population, okay? Um, like that. Are we okay with that? So we're telling them to go to that destination city. You ready? Okay. Mm. Um,
Are we ready for that? Okay, should we, should we do it? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's try running it. Let's go see what happens. We're not, we're not done yet. We're not done for a reason. Let's just go see what happens. Oh, what's going on here? What do you, what do you see is happening? They're moving around. Mm. They're moving between cities, actually. If, if you look, sometimes people come in. Some people, sometimes people leave, actually. Mm. People are moving around. You see that? Okay. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, and there's, there's actually two cities on top of each other. Um, pretty nifty. Okay. Um, now potentially we could, we could, we could do some fancier things here. Um, we could, um, we could, for example, color or certain color, and we could trace them around and, you know, see which city, from which city they originally came and stuff like that. But I, um, I have in mind some deeper logic. Um, uh, wait, I have a question. Do you know an easy way to generate a random tree? Really? Cool. Okay. Um, okay. Humor me this. You ready? Okay. Okay. This won't take long at all. And then you can go to lunch. And then and then the real crescendo will occur after you come back from lunch. Because we're, we're gonna have people spreading infection between cities, which is gonna be really in. But but mark this. I want to show visually how people are moving. So each city is going to have, guess what? A color that is Random. So how do we set the color of a city? Where do we go? Here? Click on the box and, and yeah, appearance, good. And how do we, so how do I say I want this to be random? Dynamic. Man, you really good. Okay, excellent. Ex um, okay. Random color. So, um, I don't know, but I've been told that random colors um, uh, are available. So we're going to say random color. Does it have a U? Um, <laughs> okay, random color. You see that? Do we need a semicolon? No, we don't, because it's just determining a value. It's like a formula, it's an expression. We're not telling it do this. We're not telling it like go move between cities or delete this person or add this person. No, no, we're just saying compute a color, like calculate a color, give it to no semi. Okay. Okay, great. So so let's go run this model and, and what should we see when we do that? What should we see that's different? Yeah, there could be different colors. And, and boy, are they pretty, right? You see them? They're in different colors. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> okay, that really throws me back. No, really, what I want is, and it's just to be said once. I don't want it to be like forever random. Okay, oops. Um, I, I'm doing this spontaneously, as you can tell. Um, so I'm going to set it initially to be. Black, and we'll just set it once to be a random color. Okay. I'm going to set it to be, uh, well, to be white. And then um, when this gets created, I will, I will set this color to be a random, a random color. Okay. Um, so the way I like to do this, there's many ways to do it. You can put it in startup code. I'm just going to put an event into the city that says, um, Set, set initial color, set initial color, okay? And you could choose whether or not you want the year. And 
I'm going to set um, rectangle this dot rectangle dot. There should be like a set color or set fill color. There it is, set fill color. And the fill color will be random color. There we go. There we go. And there it is. Okay. Are we okay with that? You see that? So what did I do? I went and I added an event that will go off at time zero at one time and it will set the fill color for this. I alternatively could have created a tree um, that would fire it at time zero when it enters. Okay. So I'm setting the fill color of my rectangle, of my rectangle to be a randomly chosen color. Is that okay? Okay. And I call that set initial color. Okay, now let's run it. And we should see something that's still pretty, but it's less entropic. Ready? Here we go. Oh, thing of beauty. Right? Okay, awesome. Um, okay, now what I want to do in my final little bit before lunch, when we migrate people, I want to set their color um, to be of, of a person to be the, look, the, the color of the city whence they came. So I, I want to sort of give them a color of the city from which they, they originally came. Are we ready for that? Watch this. Um, uh, so I'm going to in perform migration. By the way, here I'm just updating this bit of logic. Um, I am going to do here this dot, and it's this little thing here. Okay, now, now I'm going to be in, in, in trouble. I want to I want to set the color for this. And I think I think to set the color for this, Wade would 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 probably be able to unpack it. But you need to look inside this at shape body. Um, so rather unusual construct. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think you're good. Yeah. So this is a, it's called person dot, and then if you go look, it's called shape body. Yeah. Shape body, okay. So this dot person, that's the name of the, that's the name of the icon here. Maybe, maybe we should call this something different. I'm going to call it person image, person image, because this is not the person, it's the person's image, okay? And and then in my, in the, so I called this person image, that's all I did, and perform migration, I'm going to set it to be this dot person image dot shape, oh, oh dot, uh, okay, wait, I need, Need you, need you as a wingman here. Um, ah, okay. 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 Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Many a time have I done that, and and uh, that's a good. Good strategy. Okay, I'm sorry, folks. I um, so okay. We'll, we're going to need this later, though, because people are going to have colors later. So we're going to create a variable that indicates the color. Anyone remember how to do that? First of all, that variable will be called what? Yeah, and you can choose the spelling, and the type of it will be color. I'm going to spell it with a U. Um, okay. Um, okay, and its initial value will be back black. Okay, and when they perform migration, we will set that to this dot color equals the color of my city. How do I find out my city before I move? Yeah, city dot. I could say this dot city dot. And then 
how do I get its color? Rectangle dot get fill color. Okay, okay. I'm gonna put it up there. Okay, this is the more more cult, more logic than I was hoping to put in. I just wanted to show, hey, there's a hang on, I have a color that indicates their source so we could see visually. I, I, I thought it'd be easier for me. Okay. Oh, sure. 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 I'm sorry. No. There we go. No. So the basic deal is I'm setting my color to be the fill color of the city whence I came. So I'm gonna, so when they move to a new city, you'll be able to see, see, see what city they came from. Okay. Are we ready for this? What's the thing that's missing? The other part of Wade's recipe. The McDonald McDonaldian recipe. Yeah, th look, this thing has to be, this, this is a, a little annoyance in any logic. When you have something like this, there's these internal shapes that are lines. So guess what we want to do? For this guy here, you can't just like, remember with a rectangle or with a oval, you could just click on it and set their fill color. Um, here, we have to kind of click on this. And then over here, you go into presentation, you open up level and person image and shape body. It's kind of an annoyance uh, when you're dealing with these anthropomorphic objects, but you can set the, I'm sorry, not the, the line color, it's the fill color. I'm gonna set it to guess what? Color. There we are. For this shape body, I'm gonna set it to color. And so initially it'd be black, and then I move it, and then when I perform migration, their color will be changed to the color of the city whence they came. Are we okay with that? Okay, so build. Who needs TA help? TA help? Okay, but I probably should have put this up here um, just on the big screen so people could see it but the fill color for this shape body is set to, boom, this dot color. In other words, the color of the person. Okay, that's all. So let's, let's go run it and let us go see if we can see who's moved. There we go. Oh man, look at that movement going on. We could see these people from other cities who have moved to this city other cities who have moved here. Do you see that? They're, they're moving around. These two, how come these two don't have like any light blue, any teal? Too far away, they can't go there, but these two can change here, right? Um, uh, interestingly, um, I actually don't see, oh, you know what? Um, that, okay, yeah. So the green ones, why aren't there any green ones visible here? Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so right. All of these came from there, from the from the can, and all of these came from here. Um, uh, all the blue ones here came from here. Uh, all the all the green ones here came from here, and all the tan ones here came from here. Okay. Yeah. So this communicates a little bit of migration. You see that? Okay. So we have people moving between populations and the populations, the movement patterns are constrained by the networks and things are happening. Are we okay with that? Okay, so the final thing, um, which I'm not gonna do uh, at the moment um, because it would take 15 minutes and I don't wanna keep you late for lunch or in, in between, but basically we're gonna need to uh, put in uh, some health, health development. So, um, that's what you need to do. But first, you should get some lunch, and we'll come back here and we'll finish this up. Okay, that's it. Okay, so that's part one, and part two will be a lot shorter. Thank you. And Aaron's joined us from the airport. Hi, Aaron. 
That's great. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So um, I'm going to, as normal, um, well, I'm tempted to shut this, close this, but um, so we can get going on some recording things. Is that okay, Erin? And then I'll, I'll come back to this, uh, put it on again um, when we're back from lunch. Okay. Um, thanks very much. Uh, we'll, we'll see you then if you are not already on your flight. You're probably on, on your flight. I think you'll be boarding soon. So take care of safe flights. Glad things have gone well to Edmonton. Take care. Hope there's no disruptions. Thanks.